Hello and welcome to the YouTube upload of our character profile of Ken Barlow. We thought, as it was the 60th anniversary week of Coronation Street this week, who else should we upload to YouTube? Old Ken himself, the original. And um, yeah, so this was taken from episode 115 and 116 of the podcast. Because back, wow. back then we thought we Ken's such a big character, we couldn't possibly fit him in one episode. But it turned out we probably could have done if we were going by today's standards because we um each of the parts is like half an hour each or so isn't it <laughs> so we got we got a good hour out of ken but i think these days we just bung it all in together yes but there's there is more to say um because this was recorded back in 2014 and, he, and for for an old geezer he's done quite a lot since then as well so yeah if you manage to make it right to the end of this video you'll be able to be caught right up to date with what he's been doing in the past six years. Gemma, you listened to this this afternoon, didn't you? Is there anything yep. that we need to, um, anything that our listeners need to look out for? Um, I, uh, a lot of the stuff we, well, all of the stuff we talked about, um, of about his early years, I hadn't seen any of it, now I have. So I feel like... Um, did we get it right? Yeah, we did a pretty good job. <laughs> um, I wasn't very, I, I keep I kept saying Ken was dull and he was not very intellectual. And also I was a bit baffled about why everyone was supposed to, think that Ken and Deirdre had such a great relationship I definitely think you need <laughs> to have watched about about at the time what like 54 years worth of Coronation Street to get why they were such a good couple together Do you get because, it now yeah I get it now yeah <laughs> <laughs> well uh, let's let's uh, let's have a play of it then so this was taken as I say from episodes back in 2014 here's what we said about Ken then and we'll see you on the other side to um, get you bang right up to date the time has come there has been no big character that's shone this week that we haven't already done as a character profile but the person we're choosing today has been in it this week and it's about time that we did ken barlow what <laughs> we've got to, what episode are we on 115 now we still haven't and we were putting off doing ken all this time um he's back so let's talk about him. But because it's Ken and Ken is special, we we're going to make this a two-parter character profile. He's been in it quite a bit, in fact. So um, we're going to have talk which about one, which one's Ken. I the main him. one. He's the main he's one. He's the main one. Okay. Yeah, he's the main one. Coronation Street, in many ways, is the story of Ken and all his strange neighbours. But yeah, we're going to do a part one this week, and then part two probably next week, or it might be the week after, if you want to do a classic character break. But um, we start off in a normal way. We'll do his um, vital statistics. Ken was born on the 9th of October, 1939. So he's a Libra. See, that explains everything like about you. his personality. Like you, his birthday is just a few days after you. His parents are Frank and Ida Barlow. He's got a brother, David Barlow, who we did a character profile of a couple of months ago. He was married three times. Um, not very many compared to some of the characters he on the street now. He was married four times. Well, he but got to married to Deirdre people. twice, didn't he? So Valerie Tatlock in 1962, Janet Reed in 1973, and good old Deirdre in 1981, and then again in 2005. Children-wise, um, he's been a little promiscuous. He's got Lawrence Cunningham in 1961, Susan Barlow 1965, Peter Barlow 1965, they were twins, Tracy Barlow, uh, that, uh, adoptive, I guess, but still counts, I suppose. Um, 1986, she was born, and Daniel Osborne in 1995. And none of those children have the same surnames as any of his wives. No, no. He's, Just for shame. Ken's been putting it about a bit over the years. He first appeared on the 9th of December, 1960. Yeah, and he's been in over 4,100 episodes, um, which is makes him the longest serving and the most featured character he's the only character that's been over four thousand episodes unbelievable what a life ken has had but it could have been cut much short because he was actually saved from the axe in 1964 the producer then uh, wanted to get rid of a load of characters including ken but the producer himself was um given the boot before he got the chance mm -hmm. how different coronation street um, could have been without how ken. different would um his life have been if he hadn't been ken Barley? Who, William Roach? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder what he did. Because, I, I mean, he had been on um, the stage beforehand, so he could have just been a, a fest on be the stage. Of, maybe he'd be one of those people that you always see in stuff. You're like, who's that guy? Maybe he would be like Patrick Stewart. <gasps> maybe he, <laughs> he could have been. He could have been Jean-Luc Picard. I don't see why not. Jean-Luc <laughs> No, um, 
Casting. So he was cast after Tony Warren saw him performing in the Granada television play Marking Time. Um, I don't think. I think you mean Marking Time, not it's time for marking. <laughs> that's just how I look at it as a teacher. I guess. Oh God, that sounds boring. <laughs> um, he almost turned down the part though because he was doing so well in London. He agreed to take it. He was offered the role in on a thirteen-episode, six-week contract because originally Coronation Street was only going to be was only commissioned for 13 episodes, but then obviously carried on for a little bit longer. Um, And when he realised he was onto something big, he agreed to stay. Um, And then the contracts basically just kept on coming and and kept on extending. At the time when he was cast, he earned £10 per episode. Um, Recently, well, 2010, apparently, he... um, or he got three thousand pounds per episode. Is that per episode that he was in, or just per episode of Coronation Street? I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Whether they have like an, a yearly salary or or what? I, I would have thought because they... I would have thought that if you that would be a stupid way of negotiating your salary because it just means they don't want to write you in. Mm. Yeah, I mean the the characters that are hardly ever in it maybe shouldn't be on a yearly salary, but. I don't know. I don't know how it works. But anyway, £3,000 an episode. It's not exactly Friends levels of... Um, wasn't that, that a million, like a million pounds dollars, an episode? A million dollars an episode or something. But, I mean, we're sensible in this country. We don't just throw don't money. Don't money away like that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Plus, it's Northern Soap, so a bit <clears> thrifty, aren't they? He's not He's not the highest paid um, person, I don't think. I, I, maybe... No, I think, like, Barbara Knox might be or something. It's not know. about how good you are. It's about how good your agent is. Mm, yeah. So, um... Because Ken has had so many storylines and done so many things, we thought we might probably bore you to tears if we just ran down every single thing he did in the last 50-odd years. Um, So we're going to do something a bit different, just to be special, and we're going to organise Ken's character profile into categories. So this week we're going to talk about family and romance and children, and next week we're going to talk about um, personality, career, and other little um, odds and ends like that. And trivia. Ken trivia, exactly. So, family then. He started off as um, living with his dad, Frank, his mum, Ida, and his brother, David. Um, Frank was very, very working class, and they didn't often see, he didn't often see eye to eye with Ken. Um, they kind of drifted apart over the early 60s, and after um, Frank won the pools, I think, or something, and he moved to Cheshire in 1964, they didn't really have anything to do with each other. Ken always had aspirations of getting out of the street, kind of rising above his working How class How that going for you, Ken? Yeah, exactly. How ironic. Ida was a bit closer to Ken, his, his mum, but um, sadly she was killed in a road accident in 1961, so... Makes it sound didn't... like a cat. <laughs> Ida the cat. Well, I was just killed in a road accident. She was hit by a car, run over. Just like a cat. Just like a cat, yeah, okay. Um, he got on all right with David, but um, he didn't really like the idea when... David married into the Ogdens. He married um, Irma Ogden. But then he died in a car crash. Is that, can I say that? Accident? Car crash in 1970. Um, so he was kind of on his own after that. He started off as one of the four Barlows, but within the first 10 years of the programme, mum was, killed off all his mum was dead, brother was dead, dad was off in Cheshire. Mm. So Ken had to then start looking for somebody to love, to share his life with. Um... Yeah, and like you said, he's still he hasn't moved very far. I mean, he's the, the next house along, I think. He's still pompous intellectual, which is what he, his dad always accused him of being back then. Um, still fighting for what he believes in. Um, he's a pillar of the community now, I would say. He's looked up to by everybody. Yeah, I probably, think so. Even people that think he's a bit foolish, a bit kind of like Roy in a way, that he's kind of tolerated, yet at the same time um, they do genuinely... Yeah, I mean, but back That's in the early, back in the early days, he was a lot more of an outsider, and because everybody was really proper working class in the early days of Coronation Street, um, Ken was always different. But he's he's accepted a lot more now. Um, I mean, Blanche would always kind of put him in his place a little bit, but yeah, he uh, he he's he's one of one of the Cory lot now, isn't he? Mm. So. Romance, then. Let's talk about that. Ken is well known for having He's lots of girlfriends Lothario. over the year. Exactly. Um, according to... I can't remember where I got this from. Wikipedia, maybe? He's dated 27 women and married four times. And I've got a big, long list of girlfriends here. Um, and there's not 27 here, so I don't think it's all been mentioned. 
But on the list, he has been out with Susan Cunningham, Marion Lund, Valerie Tatlock, Jackie Marsh, Yvonne Chappell, Rita Littlewood, Norma Ford, Elaine Perkins, Janet Reed, Petty Barkin, Wendy Nightingale, Sally Robson, Deirdre Langton, Sonia Price, Wendy Crozier, Alma Sedgwick, Maggie Redmond, Denise Osborne, Sue Jeffers and Martha Frazier. Wow. And many, many more possibly. One of them was, um, I've got no idea which one it was, was Joanna Lumley. My God. Did you know that she'd been in it and going no. out with Ken? There's some, I didn't. Intro, there's some information was for you. Was she playing Patsy? No, I don't know who's yours, but mm. I think it was before she was famous. Um, she must have been a bit famous to be on television. Yeah. He always just wanted... That's how I can tell if you're famous. You're on well, telly. You're on telly, yeah. That's why we're not famous enough. No. Yeah. Um, he always... He just wanted someone to look after him, really. He wasn't. It wasn't necessarily that he was a great romantic or anything. He just wanted someone to cook his dinner and, and wash the dishes for him. He's he was, far too busy especially in the early oh yeah he's too busy doing his intellectual stuff i mean Going he writes his poetry now and he's writing his poetry being a journalist yeah it's exactly very, very time consuming i think he kind of got that idea of um male being the head of the household from his father because he he would he would just like be reading the paper while i was running around doing the that cooking and the like cleaning life, that does what the man reading the paper and someone else does everything yeah <laughs> um and yeah, and and the fact that I don't, he he didn't get inv properly emotionally invested in a lot of those women, and he was never one for fidelity. He would go off with somebody else if somebody better showed up. Even like when he was with a good long term partner like Deirdre, he would still go off with somebody else like Martha Fraser on a boat or anything. He managed to justify it in his brain, didn't he? Like for whatever reasons he had, it's always not just because he's a cheating bastard. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, marriages then. The first marriage was to Valerie Tatlock. Um, William Roach and... Um, who played Valerie Tatlock? Um, I can't remember. You'd be shocked to know I, I've got no You've clue. got no idea. They had a good on-screen relationship, partly because they had grown up going to neighbouring schools. I don't know whether they actually knew each other, but um, they, they had some common ground there. And they were actually a pretty popular couple with viewers. Um, although William Roach had initially been a bit wary that getting the character married off would lose him his heartthrob status and also go against the character's desires to leave Weatherfield. But um, they went through that anyway. And 20 million people watched their wedding in August 1962, so a big event. Um, before long, though, Ken got bored of married life with kids and he had an affair with Jackie Marsh, who was a reporter. Like April O'Neil. Yes, that's a bit of a random reference there. She's the only other female reporter I've ever heard of. <laughs> um, they were caught kissing by Elsie Tanner, him and Jackie, so that he called that off. But anyway, it was he, he just didn't like being tied down. I mean, he liked the idea of somebody cooking and cleaning for him, but the, the idea of... Having to go in to watch them cooking and cleaning is too much work. And talk to them while they're doing it, maybe. Boring. Yeah. But um, Jackie, uh, Valerie was ended up being killed by a faulty hairdryer in 1971. Lucky! Anyway. So we managed to get out of that one. Next marriage um, was Janet Reed, and I think that one was not particularly popular with the viewers at the time because um, basically it's, Janet had been out with um, I think Len Fairclough and, and a couple of other people, um, and then this relationship with Ken kind of came out of nowhere a little bit. They started dating in 1973. He invited her to go up to Scotland with him, um, and they got married there. So this was like a, a wedding that went on off screen and. They just came back Can married. You imagine, oh, they did that with Kylie and David. No, they got married on screen, but it was it was a it was similar in that like David went off to wherever Somewhere, it was, Greece or something, and came up with with somebody who was close to being his wife. So it was a bit bit rushed, and even William Roach um, didn't really like that. I got I found a quote here with him saying, "I was very cross about the whole thing. There was no wedding. She just arrived. No build up to it." It was just like an idea that was shoved in. I wasn't happy. Oh my God, the wrath of the Ken. The wrath of Ken come, is back again. Yeah, um, the fact that she had all these affairs with other characters um, made the viewers not particularly like um, Janet, Reed. Janet. No, um, and she didn't want to hang out with the kids. Yeah, she she kids. wasn't she wasn't very likable woman. woman. All women love children. What's wrong with her? She arranged for them to be sent to a boarding school rather than return to Weatherfield which is a bit um, mean, but then that's how Harry Potter started, so yeah. who knows. Peter could have been a wizard. Exactly. The couple rowed, and then the boarding school row 
got used as an exercise in drama schools. Oh no, <laughs> you don't know what I mean. Yeah, no, this this. Well, you uh, write things. I write this thing. This you was something to do with. Um, apparently there was uh, the the scene where Ken and Janet were having a row over should they send Peter and Susan off to boarding school was a famous scene and different drama schools used to use that as an uh, as an exercise for children to um, act out to practice this scene. So that was a bit bizarre. But anyway, they split up in 1974. She came back and forth to the show over the next few years and then killed herself after a final rejection from Kent in 1977. Sad. Which left him feeling very, very guilty. But then came along the proper love of Ken's life, Deirdre Langton. They got together at a disco in 1979 at the community centre. Um, even though she wasn't divorced from Ray at the time, um, within a few months, he was already taking her and Tracy away on holiday. Um, and though, and then they split up in 1980, but he came, he got a bit jealous of seeing her in other relationships. So he proposed to her during a trip to Glasgow. Uh, after the 20 million viewers that, um, the first Ken wedding came, that was, you'd have thought that'd be hard to top, but indeed it wasn't. 24 million people watched Den Ken and Deirdre get married in 1971. Uh, 1981, sorry. They'd been dating for two years and that coincided quite nicely with, um, Charles and Diana's wedding as well. Um, by that time though, William Roach was worried that his character was getting too boring and the writers didn't know what to do with him. So he asked for them Nonsense. To, he asked for them to give him some juicier stories to deal with and uh, that they did. The result of that was the very, very famous Mike and Deirdre affair and that uh, infamous doorstop scene. So um, that was the one that they play on all the clip shows where Mike comes round, Ken shoves Deirdre up against the, the wall, um, and even that was sort of William Roach trying to make the scene bigger than it was written to be, because it was originally going to have Ken watching Deirdre and Mike talk, but um, Roach had said, look, I'm, I think Ken would intervene, he wouldn't just sit there and, and let this happen. Um, Deirdre was going to stop him from hitting Mike, and then the, the, the shoving up against the door bit was improvised by Roach, and um, Anne Kirkbride's reaction of utter shock and going and hiding away in the lounge was actually quite genuine. Um, and then that, of course, led to the long-standing Mike and Ken feud. And which of that did you see? Because by... None of it. I don't remember. No, no, I mean just like the, the actual feud between Mike and Ken, because... He wasn't in it. What, Mike? You remember seeing a bit of Mike? He came he... back. Yeah, but Mike was I in it when it. you were watching it at the beginning, wasn't he? But I think by... By then, like they they thawed out a little bit, but all the way through like the eighties and the nineties, Mike and Ken were at loggerheads and they had all those punch ups and everything. But um, they made up at the um, I think when there was a, a siege at Frescoes or something, Mike and Ken ended up being tied to each other and they kind of made up a bit from then. And then of course Mike died in Ken's arms, which was kinky, very poetic, I would have said. Um, Deirdre agreed to stay with Ken after this affair anyway, um, but. That ended after he had an affair with Wendy Crozier. He tried to kill himself after Deirdre refused to go back to him, um, but Bet stopped him. And then um, that was it until 1999, when thanks to a little bit of Cupid work from Blanche, they got back together and they married in 2005. What do you think of Ken and Deirdre as a couple? I mean, they're like the ultimate soap couple in a way, but they seem to be not necessarily suited to each other. Totally unsuited to each other. Why do you think that they're able to stay together for so long then? Like all good marriages, they have learned the art of ignoring each other. Tolerating each other? No, just ignoring each other. You don't ignore me. Well, we don't have a good marriage then, do we? Oh no. We have to build up to it. I think that... She just ignores him and he ignores her. They get on with their... They, they, they kind blind... of get on with their own separate lives, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. They turn a blind eye to each other. They, they care for each other. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that this whole there's no romance there. But then that's just, I guess, what happens to a couple who've been together for most of their lives. It's like if but if you can compare Ken and Deirdre to like Jack and Vera or Stan and Hilda, for example, with those characters, I think you did see the romance a bit more. Because like sometimes if it was, I mean, for all the 
the stuff that um, Jack said about Vera and how it, it was like he was she was his ball and chain. They did have the romantic scenes, didn't they? Like Jack and Vera's anniversaries or whatever. They would often have some little sweet scenes together. Or they also had a bit of a spark, didn't they? And, and they had a they were equal footing and they could give as good as they got. Whereas um, I think with Ken and Deirdre's relationship, I think Ken feels himself to be far superior to Deirdre. I don't know why Deirdre stays with him particularly. Um, but I do, I do think that in Ken's eyes, they're not really equals. And I think he mm. looks down on her quite a lot. Well, yeah, he's always like telling her off for smoking and stuff, isn't he? Even yeah. though he used to smoke loads. And when he was, um, there, there was one point that he, um, when he was supposed to be looking after the twins when they were little, he left the house unattended once because he went to go and buy some cigarettes and the house nearly burned down at the time. So, oh, right. yeah. But uh, I don't know that they're, they're just like a... Uh, I was I was pleased when they got back together again because in my eyes Ken and Deirdre just belong together because they they can support each other even if there's not any like burning passion there. You can describe their relationship in two words. What? Benign neglect. <laughs> That's a bit sad, really, isn't it? That the one of the iconic soap character uh, couples is uh, described that way. Well. I, I challenge I challenge someone anyone to find the romance between the pair of them now. There wasn't there was not there's nothing is there. I mean they, I were, ha think they were happy to see each other when he came back from Canada. I don't think it's a priority. I don't think they need to show every single couple having the same relationship. And I think Corey's quite good at that. Showing different types of relationships. Yeah, I mean if, if you look at like Liz and Jim, they're not in a relationship but they've still got that little spark, haven't there's a they? Spark there. Yeah. I think um, the Deirdre and Ken are best when they're being forced to fight for each other. And I, but that 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 kind of storyline gets a bit boring. Mm. Um, try it out over and over again. It makes me wonder whether Deirdre would ever go off and have an affair. I I don't know how many big storylines Ken and Deirdre have got left in them. But I mean that um, Martha Fraser affair from when was that five, six, seven years ago? I can't remember. That was. That was the, the last big affair storyline for them, wasn't it? And yeah, I think it's harder to write a convincing affair storyline for an older woman. Mm. I think Deirdre definitely could have her head turned by someone else if, if he came along. I mean, she did with Lewis Archer, didn't she? And there was Everyone that. Did. Yeah, and because and, um, that was she was wasn't she filmed um, snogging him in the bookies or something? And that was when the whole Manchester Tart scene mm. happened. But yeah. I, I think they're going to keep them together now, but it's going to be quite sad if uh, Ken dies or whatever. don't know how she'll cope. Why do you always talk about people dying when they're old? I don't know. It's life, like we said it's earlier just, in the podcast. You're just like Michael. <laughs> just like Michael. Children then. So moving on from um, romance. Peter and Susan first, the twins. They were born in 1965, April 1965. Um, he hadn't, Ken hadn't been particularly happy to hear the news that uh, Valerie was pregnant and he even blamed her for it. Um, Takes two. I know. Well, she closed her salon to care for them. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then this was later in the year. Ken nearly burned, burned the house down when he went off to get cigarettes. Um, 1971 though, after Valerie dies, Ken, um, he just couldn't cope looking after them. He hadn't been used to, he hadn't been the one that was raising them. He was like... Like his the dad just sitting father. there. Yeah, exactly. So he was suddenly had parenthood thrust upon him. Didn't know what to do. He hired a nanny who turned out to be a bit of a, say, be a bit of a sadist. Um, and then she resigned. So um, I think there were like a couple of people on the street that helped him out. But in the end, um, it was Valerie's mum, Edith, that in a way came to the rescue because she decided she wanted custody for Peter and Susan. And he thought, well, she can have them then. Send, sent them off to Scotland to live. Um, and I think as a result of Ken doing this, there was always Peter and Susan never really listened to Ken when they came back to visit. They they knew that he was their dad, but they never had any respect for him particularly because of no wonder he he couldn't he couldn't look after them. Um, 1985. Susan and Mike started dating. So by this, this was like two years after the Ken and Deirdre affair and Susan's act of rebellion, I guess, was to start dating Mike Baldwin. They got engaged. Ken reluctantly agreed to go to their wedding at the last minute. Um, and then Susan eventually left Mike. 
saying that she was going to have an abortion, but in fact she gave birth to Adam. But then she died in a car crash in 2001, so that was the end of her. In 2000... Was Ken, like, cursed by a gypsy when he was a child to have all of his relatives die in a car crash? I think so, actually. <laughs> it's pretty sad, isn't it? Yeah, like, three we're up to. Now she keep a tally. That's quite a lot more than the average person, isn't it? Yeah, well, Ken has had quite a life. Yeah. I think we can agree that. In 2000, Peter came back to Coronation Street. I think it was like on the Millennium episode or, or on maybe it was on the 40th anniversary episode. I can't remember. But um, he came back to Coronation Street full time after joining the Navy. Um, he'd become a much different person to Ken by then. And um, although Ken usually continues to support him, um, or he, he usually is like with, with the prison, he, he's fighting for, for Peter. He, yeah. He, 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 I think he, he like wants to make up for being a bad father when he was little but um ken was against peter's plan to open a bar with leanne for example because he knew that that would be detrimental to Too his much health temptation as an alcoholic um tracy now there's probably some viewers that haven't been like long-term viewers or like hardcore fans of the show that don't even realize that tracy's not ken's daughter because out of all of the children that Ken has. She seems to be one that's closest to him, don't you think? Really, really. Yeah, but um, he, she was adopted. I, I think Ken did kind of bring her up, because in 1986 um, Ken adopted her after reconciling with Deirdre after the whole Mike Baldwin thing. Um, he's she, She's just been a bit of a constant disappointment to him, really, hasn't she? Yeah, but I guess it's a testament to his child-rearing abilities because he's actually spent more time with her than any of his other actual children. Yet still, she's turned out to be evil and manipulative. <laughs> yeah, he, which he can see. I mean, Deirdre's always pretty blind to Tracy's faults. I mean, Deirdre knows, for example, that Mother's Tracy love. killed Charlie and it wasn't self-defence. But um, And Ken often has to try and convince Deirdre that Tracy's not always... Sort of sweetness and light, I guess. Um, when Tracy went to trial for Charlie's murder, Deirdre did a terrible job as a character witness because Ken had tried to convince her not to go through with it. Um, and that actually led to another little split between Deirdre and Ken. Mm-hmm. We've also got Daniel, third child, fourth child. I've lost count already. Um, Daniel, probably one of the... Le- least known children of Ken but he was born in 1995 after a relationship between him and Denise Osborne who was um salon owner at the time I think Denise um promptly ran away with another man leaving 55 year old Ken to look after the baby himself I um, see those years again those golden years when he was 55. <laughs> sprightly chap well he tried to like make amends for being a terrible parent to his other child children by doting on um Dan, uh, Daniel um, but when but then Denise came back tried to get custody of him and then they kind of lost touch um, William Roach actually this was another storyline that he disagreed with he thought that Ken would have fought a bit harder to look after Daniel um, and although script writers actually apologised to him it was too late to change the storyline do you think that they like tread on eggshells around William Roach Probably just kind of, I wonder I wonder I mean if anyone's going to have um, impact or say on what goes on he's think, going to be the one isn't I he I think for the good of the show I think they probably don't have any say in it at all because I, d- I don't I can't see how they would benefit I wonder how I mean a lot of the like the with, do they have an archivist anymore I don't know but I mean the script writers and the producers and everything they probably I don't know do they know as Ken as well as Ken does himself maybe but anyway, Daniel came back um, briefly in 2007 because Denise came back. Um, she'd heard that Tracy had been sent to prison, so she phoned offering her sympathies um, because he was going through a rocky patch with Deirdre then because of the whole um, fallout of the trial. He went to stay with them. Um, Daniel didn't particularly bond with this old man father. I mean, people... To, to look at him, Ken was like this guy's this this boy's granddad. Um, apparently, he's now in touch with Daniel a bit more often, but he doesn't really talk about him, and it just seems to be a Why forgotten, forgotten aspect of Ken's character. I mean, there's no like pictures of him around the house or anything, is there? As far Why as I know, can't they bring him back as a hunk? 
Well, what how old is how old must he be now? Nineteen, I think he's right right for the, right, for the it, he? right for the hunking up. Yeah, Why not? maybe. Can you, uh, can you imagine Tracy around him? That'd Why? Be quite funny, actually. She's a man age, wouldn't she? But her own. Oh, not 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 related. Not related. Mm. Score. Oh, primary incest, maybe. Um, that would get the back in the papers. Age gap, incest. <laughs> uh, oh, we're giving these away for free. I know. Come on. So finally, we have Lawrence, and this is Ken's oldest son, but the latest one to be revealed. He was played by um, William Roach's real life son, Linus. Um, in two thousand and ten, it was revealed that um, he, he can have this extra secret son that he didn't know about, um, who was born to his first ever girlfriend, Susan Cunningham. Susan had written a letter to Ken to tell him about this son, but he had got stuck behind the skirting board at number three, so it wasn't until, two th until 2010, when, at 10, when Emily was doing a bit of decorating, that they found this letter, um, and he was able to get back in touch with him. So Lawrence had become um, an English lecturer and had two of his own children. They met up in September 2010, but they fell out because Lawrence's son, James, who, a bit confusingly, was played by another one of William Roach's sons, um, was gay and uh, Lawrence couldn't accept that. James ended up coming back the following year, involved in the whole soup kitchen scandal that um, Sophie and Dennis and, and um, Sean were involved in. But um, he left after conning Kevin and Ken, and that should be where we might is going to be where we're so going to leave it now. So James was the gay son. No, yes. So James was the gay son. He's gay and he cons people. Yes, I don't think there's the link there. What? What do you mean? What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying. What are you saying? I don't nothing. You said there's no link. You said he's gay and he cons people. No, I'm saying he's the perfect boyfriend for Todd. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying there's an interesting link <laughs> between being gay and conning people. Although from Coronation Street, you certainly would better tell, would you? <laughs> not at the moment. Ah, uh, maybe. Why not? Mm, that I... would be quite an interesting little relationship to watch, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. That yeah, we'll is, there. And... That is the, the loves and love children of Ken Barlow. And we'll be back next week to dirty talk old more. Beggar. <laughs> yeah, we're good. That, that's our week one summary of him. Ken <laughs> Barlow, dirty old beggar. Are we going to change our mind about him next week? When we find out more about his dirty old beggar personality. <laughs> well, we're going to find out about his career, his personality, and our extra Ken tidbits next week. Mmm, tidbits. I like Ken. He, he's great, he but can't... I mean. You can't really hate him, can you? <laughs> no. He's he's experienced life. He's lived he may not have moved very far, but he has had a, a long and fulfilling he's life. He's proven that life experience doesn't necessarily come from geography. <laughs> exactly. So um yeah, let's leave it for there and uh, we'll be back next week. Welcome back to part two of our character profile of Ken Barlow. This is the first time we've ever had a part two. He's had such a long life. Last week we started and we talked about his um, family life and we talked children. about his children stuff. And we learned that he was not actually a very good dad at all, nor a particularly good husband. Um, but we still love him. This week we're going to talk about his career. He has had many jobs. Um, this always makes me think of the Harry Hill Ken song where he says... I was a teacher, I was a trolley pusher, I was a taxi driver. And whenever we... Now I am a free man. Exactly. Whenever we listen to it in the car, we always say taxidermist instead of taxi driver. Just, just for a laugh. Better. You imagine oh, Ken is actually Norman Bates, isn't he, if he's a taxi driver? It's Norman Bates, not with a briefcase, but with a library book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Ken has had lots of jobs because he got such good education. Um, 1957, before Coronation Street started, he'd left grammar school to go to Manchester University, where he, uh, which he got into because of a scholarship from school. Um, this was the first real time he'd had working, uh, mixing with the middle class, um, and he ended up being rather embarrassed of his background coming from the, um, the back streets of Weatherfield. 
1961, he graduated with a second class honours in history and English. Um, and he turned down a teaching position in Surrey to look, look after um, his dad when his mum died. And instead, he got in a job as an assistant personnel officer at Amalgamated Steel. Um, but he didn't stay there for long. He quit it pretty quickly and he became a teacher at Bessie Street well, School. anyone be teachers back in them days, didn't they? Yeah, well, Ken is a pretty clever bloke. So that, you've got you to be clever to be a teacher. Be, yeah, but that's not the only thing you've got to be. What else have you got to be? You've got to have patience of a saint. You've got to be able to work all the hours God sends. Not back in the 60s you didn't. No, you just Different probably times be like, like able to channel all of your rage into chain smoking in the exactly. staff room. I think uh, out of all his jobs, teaching is the one that I associate mostly with Ken. Although I think he's probably a journalist for even longer. I would say longer. being a busybody journalist, probably. Do you reckon? He always he always makes me think like he he was a a journalist because he had a sense of moral outrage yeah rather yeah. than he wanted or he loved it like he, he or, wanted to tell things like it was he wanted yeah he wanted yeah I find that very irritating <laughs> why did you become a journalist same Cause reason I like writing because like, that's all I can do right <laughs> um, what did he do next 1962 he upset his neighbours by writing an article that appeared to criticise the working class in survival magazine <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful awesome what first of all what is this magazine right that has the commission's pieces about the working class and how awful they are i don't know what survival magazine it sounds like some kind of like mountain trekking magazine yeah, or something like, but maybe it's just like you, how to survive when you're faced with working class people when you right? trek up the himalayas take take a moment to just realize about all those plebs who will never get the chance because they're not rich enough to leave the country aren't they awful no, it's how to survive up north if you're not a pleb. <laughs> Where it's grim. Um, he then started to work on a novel about growing up on a northern back street, but it was sadly rejected. Some say he's still writing that novel today. It does come back later on. Um, he it's pretty much Coronation Street, isn't it? <laughs> he carried on writing, even scripting events he'd seen on the street. So sort of all this um, argy-bargy between Ina Sharp That's and really Mousy Tanner on that. He wrote it as scripts, but the TV company he submits to rejects them. So it's too gritty and northern. That's quite, maybe, maybe that was like a remark on the fact that it took Tony Warren so long to be able to get Coronation Street Commission. I don't doubt it. Mm. In 1964, he became the head of English at Granston Technical College, but he had to go to night school classes himself to swat up on the harder subject matter. Yeah, because Bessie Street School is um, is it, it primary, is primary isn't, it? isn't it? It's not just infants, yeah, it's primary as well. I couldn't be a secondary school teacher. Don't know <laughs> the subject just large have to, enough. You just have to, like, waffle. Yeah. Basically, in 1970, 19- I say that as someone who has a degree in <laughs> In 1971, he got a, a teaching job in Jamaica, um, but unfortunately, Valerie, his wife, died on the night of their leaving party, God, so what he party didn't go. Paper. I know. He got Ruined went back to his college sorry. job, but he later accepted deputy headship at Bessie Street, where he got friendly with Rita. Rita, who was um, turned in to be little Rita Littlewood, but she was called Rita Bates then because she was um, common law wife of um, some other bloke there who was the head, who was the the father of one of his pupils. Now, in 1974, Ken was offered a job. He just keeps getting all these jobs, doesn't he? No, this is the job section, I suppose. That's why we're talking about it. You're crazy, Michael. He, I, I carefully put all the information into different sections yes, a few weeks so he ago. was offered a job of Northern Executive Administrative Assistant at the Mark Britton Warehouse. That sounds posh. Why was he offered this? I don't know, because... You didn't take that information out, did you? No. This was a distribution centre on the other side of the street. Yeah. And Janet walks out on him and refuses to take the better paid position, but he ends up taking it anyway. Yeah. Typical Ken. 1970... I don't understand how you would get more money being an administrative assistant than you would do... Being a head teacher, or being... deputy head teacher. No, it was, wasn't he the head of English? No, no, that he was... No, back then he was a deputy head at Better Street School. Oh. Keep up, keep up. It's too <laughs> so, difficult. So many jobs that can His have. TV is very spotty, isn't it? I know. 1975, he was made redundant and became a taxidermist. Taxi <laughs> no, taxi driver. Um, which he was actually surprisingly good at. Didn't, I think he didn't have to think so much, didn't have to use his brain quite so much. Not that we're saying taxi drivers don't, but it was just like a switch off and drive. It's not an academic nice. career, is what we're trying to say. Which yes. I don't think anyone should be offended by. <laughs> um, in 1976, he was um, a community development officer in the Coronation Street Community Centre. Wow. Maybe he can go back to working in the community centre with this new one that's I open. can actually see quite an interesting 
interesting storyline if he gets involved in it because he'll butt heads with Yasmin, won't he? Because yeah. they'll both want to be in charge of it and he'll be like, oh, I've already been in charge of the community centre. I think it would be Read quite good CV. to give Ken something to do, actually, if he works at the community centre because, I mean, he has retired now. He is quite old. I guess I've... Is he? I thought Jasmine probably wouldn't want him to um to work. That's what I mean. Because... She would want to be the star of the show. She wouldn't want him to come and steal her thunder. No, I'm just saying because of him being so old and um Doddery. Yeah, and, and it wouldn't attract the uh, vibrant clientele that she wants. He needs, he needs to um, at least she's got like raven black hair. She yes, seems, exactly. seems, seems younger, younger than she is. Gets, yeah. Right, so Ken then started an affair with married woman Wendy <clears throat> Nightingale, and the com- the Santa committee disapproves. Which I didn't know you needed approval of a committee to have an affair. And she eventually <laughs> goes back to her husband anyway. Yeah. Um, let's skip ahead to 1983. This is when he wrote an article about road safety for the Weatherfield Recorder before taking on the Agony Aunt column there. I'd love to write an Agony Aunt column. Would you? I, I think you'd be quite it. good at it. Actually. I would be excellent at it. <laughs> well, I think you'd like. You just got to be able to write whatever. It's just you? common sense, isn't it? Yeah. He um, leaks council information about youth clubs not being used in the used in the paper. Used to the paper. Right. He was he, saying that the youth clubs aren't used these days. What are we going to do about it? And they get sacked after refusing to hide things from the community. Yeah. Because that's all journalists do, isn't it? Yeah. He buys a 33% share in the company using the redundancy money and his undeadly savings, but the job doesn't live up to what he wanted it to be. He also, um, in that position had to write an article praising um, the graffiti club which was the building where the medical centre is now if Mike Baldwin ran it it was like a nightclub kind of thing and um, he wasn't particularly happy because of the whole you know Mike Hating Ken Mike Deirdre Baldwin. thing but um, it was what turned out well, it was one of the major advertisers of the paper so he didn't have any what? choice so, I don't what do you mean that that journal- where's the journalist can take newspapers have to write positive things about stuff just because they advertise i can't believe Shocking. it yeah, I know. in 1987 he wrote an article criticizing the criticizing independent councillors the local labor party invited him to stand against alf roberts who was deirdre's employer at the time yeah, in the, the council shop. elections but the newspaper asks him to stand down and so deirdre takes his place and beats Alf. Right. 1988, he bought the rest of the Re- Weatherfield Recorder for £20,000. Um, a princely sum. Yes, he started printing council business there, though, because um, Wendy Crozier, Wendy Flamin' Crozier, as she's yeah, known exactly. in the Curry fans community. Wendy Pigging Crozier. Exactly. She, um, she had been um, leaking information to him. Um, so Wendy was later well, sacked. Well, this is to compete with the Weatherfield Gazette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Wendy was sacked and Ken offered her a job at the Recorder. Which then led to a very famous Yeah, what affair. kind of job was it he offered her, hey? Mm, mm. Aye, aye, aye. In 1990, he sells off the recorder to the editor of the Gazette to pay the mortgage when Deirdre leaves him. And then he gets sacked and gets replaced by Wendy. So he goes and gets a job at Weatherfield Comprehensive. Yeah. In 1997, he had a secret affair with Sue Jeffers, who was the head teacher there. Um, she was trying to protect him from redundancy because she was having to get rid of a load of the teachers. Sue resigned, though, when she was found out, and Kata was later made redundant anyway. Ken was made redundant. He then went on one of my favourite jobs for Ken Barlow, which was um, an escort. Alec Gilroy at the time was running Golden Years Escort Agency, and um, everyone thought it was hilarious, and it was Ken was being a bit like a high class prostitute or something but he like, was just what's his face who Le- um lewis yeah it was yeah it was kind of the same thing i think but ken didn't sleep with them or anything and he, didn't he would just them. no exactly he was just taking um rich old ladies out to dinner including um one of them who died during the meal and that kind of put ken off of it so well, that was the end of that job by a jealous husband too Yes. Um, 1998, he worked at the cabin for a bit. And in 1999, by the which time he was back with Deirdre, um, he became a trolley pusher at Fresh Goes because, again, like the uh, taxi driving job, it wasn't a particularly academic one. He just got to get outside of it. I think Weatherfield is like a communist paradise where everybody just earns the same amount of money for any job because it seems like you can go from being a head teacher to being a trolley pusher and there's absolutely no difference in your standard of living well Ken, i think ken must have like reached retirement age by then anyway so he was just like doing it what, to... pocket money yeah exactly if i if i had the choice of being to get earning pocket money i'd rather get be a head teacher to 
get them more cash. <laughs> it's a bit stressful wait. job, isn't it? Not if you don't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wrote a book in 2000 on the history of Weatherfield called Weatherfield Yesterday, and he discovered that Fred Elliot, uh, the grandfather of Fred Elliot, was hanged in Rosamond Street for murder. What an excellent fact. Yeah, fact. 2002, he became a supply teacher for Weatherfield Comp, which then becomes a permanent position when he reports colleague Charlie Ramsden for drinking on the job. What teacher hasn't? <laughs> Resigns after punching problem child Aidan Critchley. He I made it that. his mission to goad Ken and even stole and then crashed Ken's car with Sarah Louise Platt inside it. I loved it when Ken Barlow punched Aidan Critchley as a teacher. I shouldn't really be supportive of teachers yeah, punching children, but he did ask for it. You weren't a teacher though, were you? No, I wasn't point? a teacher. No, so, I didn't nowadays I thought it would be shocking. an innocent bystander, you can find that hilarious. But Aidan Critchley really was asking for it then. But the following year, he stands by Aiden after he was framed by Richard for Maxine's murder. Yeah, so he let bygones be bygones there, really. In 2008, he came out of retirement again to help out at Roy's roles when Roy went to visit Haley in Africa, and he also attended a university reunion, but um, was embarrassed that he had never had the successful career he dreamt of. Oh, we he said he had a long way, CV with lots of different jobs on, but all of his mates had um, gone on to bigger better things really so he decided that he's going to restart his book that book that he started 50 years ago he found it again but then um he realized he was neglecting deirdre while well, deirdre made it very clear that she was being neglected so he burnt it, and it was... can i burn your laptop because you're neglecting me no who wouldn't be able to do the podcast then I know, but you spend all your time working. I know, it's hard being a teacher. And 2012, because he just couldn't leave that school bug, he became a governor at Bessie Street School. I didn't realise they let people in who punch children. It's fine, it's fine. Whatever. Um, it, Governors don't do anything anyway. It was um, Brian that gave him that job, wasn't he? Because he was trying to... Was he trying to get rid of... Wendy. He was trying to get a majority of the county. there or something, and he knew that Ken would do a good job. So whether or not you punch children, it's fine. Um, yeah, he had a he had a run in with Wendy Crozier again because they brought her back for a little stint um, a couple of years ago. How comedic! Yeah, so that is all Ken's job. So you see him more as a journalist, and I see him more as a teacher. Any any position where he gets to lecture people, I think, is his is his forte. And so yeah, he either lectures people in print or actually from the front of a classroom. Mm. But either way, he's perfectly at home. Yeah, so we reach the time in the character profile. We talk about his personality. I, I think we need to start off. Is he or is he not boring? Because I think if you were to ask most people what's Ken's overriding personality trait, you'd get a lot of people saying boring. He's not boring in the same way that they make jokes about Roy being boring and having boring hobbies like train spotting. No, he's stuff. not particularly nerdy, is he? No. He's just very, very bookish and, and intellectual but he's never demonstrated to me any kind of intellectual knowledge or he's just slightly he goes to smart. the library a lot or he's just to. slightly smarter than everyone else it doesn't make you an intellectual yeah i mean i think one of the things that made the made people say that he was boring was that that was like when deirdre left him and had that affair with mike it was because he was very much like sitting down at night with his slippers already and he just didn't want to get up and go he wasn't super social or anything like that or social like you yeah that's a little bit like me you're not intellectual though you are just boring but after hey after all these storylines that he's had that we've been talking over the week i mean he's had quite a life hasn't he but i think he's like he is the perfect example of a protagonist who has extraordinary things happen to them even though they themselves are quite boring like <laughs> I, I would so. <laughs> i would say that like harry potter even though obviously in the book, he's supposedly this magical kid who's got special powers and he's so great and he's got all these great abilities. He's actually just really boring. I guess um, the sort of the protagonist and lots of stories have to be like... Yeah, they do. They've got like... And, and it's the it's characters like, around them that are the interesting yeah. ones. And Ken is like the, the centre pin of Coronation Street, yeah. isn't he, I guess? It's like built the, around him almost. He's like the focal point of the of the viewer he's like the blank spot <laughs> yes blank and bland well but um we say that ken is but of course william roach is not and if we said that william roach is boring he might try and sue us like he did with the sun william in the roach, early 90s i find a, to be a fascinating individual <laughs> he was definitely definitely not boring yeah he got uh, he got into um a, a lot, bit of hot water about when was it 25 years think, ago or so because the sun said that he was boring he didn't right? get into hot water about it they did 
Yeah, well, he, yeah, he got himself into a... Did he? Yeah, exactly. It is about it. Um, so he he always aspired to move away from Weatherfields, and I think it's quite um, quite sad that he never did, but it's been good to see the, the progression of a character all the way through the, the 50 years. I, mean, I, I do think it's quite depressing that he has never moved and he has thrown away all of his ambitions of youth, but it's also what everyone does. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's a metaphor few... for life, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people don't ever leave their comfort zone. or Yeah, they... literally, the, his comfort zone is Weatherfield. And I, if you ever, if they ever were to get rid of um, Ken, and I do not know how they would ever do that, because mm. um, I imagine it's more likely the actor will stick with it until the very, very bitter end, and yeah. he won't be in the scenes to be written out. But if they ever did get rid of him when the character, he was still around to play the character, um, I can imagine the best way to write him out would be in a blaze of glory with some kind of, like, book deal or going off to do well, something. Well, that he finally makes it. Yeah, that would be the, the fitting end of Ken's story. If he was to write a book about his life as a... As a like, that book that he burned, if he was to ever write that book and it to become a hit, and then he goes off... Of course, that would never happen because it just seems so completely unrealistic. I think it'd be sad for him to leave the street that he's been all his life on. I think it'd be like moving away from his roots and he's like betraying his roots. I mean, it's all very well that he it had those aspirations. On... I can see what you mean. It's like Becky moving away in a blaze of glory and, then, and when Hilda Ogden left to go and clean at uh, Dr. Lauder's, like, it was like well, she'd finally made it. But Okay, then in that case, he'd have to be recognised by the community for his service but he hasn't really served the community he's only done it when it's in his own best interests do you think they'll like have a gold statue of ken in coronation he hasn't Street? he hasn't contributed anything though has he every time he's done something noble or worthy it's only because he's got an ulterior motive yeah when he's been he was quite um a main sort of uh, player in like when they were well, thinking of tarmac oh, yeah, in the, the street cobbles, and everything, yeah. didn't he? He was he stood up for everything there. I think he's done his his bits. I mean, as being a like when he was yeah, but you with can't, the council and, yeah, but well, fine. Deirdre but was, you I can't guess, say but... that he's a hero of Weatherfield. No, he can't. He can't go out in a blaze of glory having served his community because he hasn't. Well, Maxine got a bench, and she and Ken's done a lot more than him, so yeah, I demand a solid gold statue. She only got a bench because she got killed. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to Ken. Who knows? I just, I, I just think it just seems sad on the face of it if you say, here's, here's a man who thinks he's above everybody else and he, he wants to escape and he wants to be recognised for his intelligence and then he just dies mm. a door away from where he was lived his whole life, yeah. having achieved nothing. Because <laughs> really, he hasn't, he hasn't left his mark anywhere. Yeah, he's got his he's children got... all over the place. Yeah, they're all a bunch of useless twonks, aren't they? Mm. He has all he's done is stop people from pulling up the cobbles. I'm sure there's other things. And they'll get they'll get pulled up anyway. He's helped children to learn, and then what better gift to the world can you give than that? No one cares about that. They do. <laughs> um... See, because when he was younger, he was a bit more fiery because he was militant, and he ended up he was in jail for doing a. An anti-Vietnam oh, yeah. War demonstration, which they got banned, and he was a left—he's a lefty liberal kind of kind of guy, but he's lost all that vim and vigor, isn't he? Yeah, I guess so. It's just a, he's not—he's not like Uncle Albert fuddy duddy, but I mean, he's—he's he's happy to sort of go around in his sort of kimono and slippers and yeah. Well, he, he said his, down into... he said called the other people on the street lazy-minded, politically ignorant, starved of a real culture, and prejudiced against any advance in human insight. And scientific progress. I think that was but, the thing that survived the magazine. But the thing is, yeah, the only two, the only two endings. If you're gonna make, if you're gonna make Ken's life into a story, the only two acceptable endings are he either leaves the street, having written a book, or he accepts his position as one of the people. Yeah. But his his story arc hasn't led him to that at all. He still thinks he's better than everybody else. He th even thinks he's better than Deirdre, and she's his, like, life partner. Yeah, he's, you know I mean? he is very snobbish. I can't, and I can't, it just isn't a natural kind of progression of people to get less snobby and more inclusive the older they get. Once no. you're a crookedy old man, that's it. <laughs> I think 
I wouldn't really like to know him in real life. I think if you knew Kenny, we're like, like, oh, you Kenny. He's he's funny to watch because of how kind of snobbish and, and um, moralistic and everything it is. But he's it's pompous. Yeah, he is pompous. He's not, probably not really a very nice person. I don't know how Deirdre puts up with him most of the time. But, um, no, I don't know either. It's not coming to me. So just to round off Ken, then we've got a few other little bits that we haven't haven't really fit into everything else. Um, here's a fact about Tracy. Not only is he her adoptive father, he's also her godfather. Wow, bit of what? trivia As for in you the there. Mafia. Yeah, he's also godfather to Jack Duckworth. Strange, because Jack had to be christened in order to be Billy and Becky Mallet's godfather. Oh, I didn't know he had to be christened to be god parent. Yeah, I think so. Well, he did that really? then anyway, and that was only like 15 years ago or so. Um, awards, Ken's won, or with the, the, William Roach. William Roach as well. He never, he never wins like awards being part of the main storylines anymore, because he's never in a main storyline, is he? He's, I think he's won Lifetime Achievement Awards. Or, no, in 1999 he got the Lifetime Achievements Award, and that's quite funny really, because 15 years later he's still going strong. I know, they tried to hint and he just wouldn't take it. Yeah, really. well done William, that's it, you can finish now. And also um, in the, the Pie Colour Television Awards back in 1983, that love triangle won, um, won uh, an award as well for Best Storyline or something. Um, what else have we got? Here's a fact. Until 1972, Ken was credited as Kenneth Barlow on all the credits. The last person who called him Kenneth was probably Blanche. <laughs> yeah, or um, Jim. Yeah, what about you, Kenneth? Um, and he was also in those weird online spin-offs, Ken and Deirdre's Bedtime Stories, which um, were, were online in 2011. Yeah, we watched a few of them, didn't we? Oh, I think I did. They, they weren't that brilliant. Um, we've got... Oh, Here's an achievement for Ken. In November 2010, he surpassed Bob Hughes from the US soap As the World Turns. No, it's William Roach who surpassed yes. him. He is the longest running soap actor ever. Yeah. And that is an achievement. I, I can't imagine anyone ever going beyond that. I mean, it's possible because you got the you got the likes of, say, Jack P. Shepard and David possibly it could. It all depends I mean, on the future of soaps, doesn't it? Yeah, you got to go a, a long time now to beat, to beat Ken. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good achievement, isn't it? I don't it? think I'm gonna bother. I think I'm already too old. <laughs> but um, less of a good achievement is um, in 2001 he was voted the third <laughs> most hated TV character of all time in Channel Four, behind only Phil Mitchell and Mr. Blobby. Those two notorious um, irritants. That's a bit sad, really. I mean, why would you vote to hate Ken? He's all right. He's funny. Quick, yeah, I think he's quite funny to watch. Like you said, he's a bit snobby and. But to say that he's the worst one, I think Someone it's just like to be ganging invited. up on somebody that's popular. I think people like the Ken and oh, Deirdre yeah. well, scenes. That's, that's what we're like in, in, in Britain, isn't it? We like to... Anyone's popular, we like to drag them down and criticise them. Yeah. I am personally fed up with people criticising me for being the best podcaster of, <laughs> of 2014. I know, that's all the stuff we have to put up with. I know, all the hatred. Yeah, but um, I, I just don't think that... I mean, nobody. I don't think there's many people that would say Ken was their favourite character. No. But I think probably that was back in a time when people were just must have been anti Corrie for some reason. I or something. Would find it really interesting to to get a load of TV people, um, get a load of like pictures of people in Coronation Street and see how many people can tell you what their names are. Yeah. And see whether he is the most recognised character. He must be one of the most recognised so characters, yeah. surely. Um. 2004, he was voted second in another poll of um, characters that people would most likely to most like to see retire as well. So people really do want to get rid of him, but I think he's fine you said as he put is. Him second after Den Watts. Yeah, Den Watts from EastEnders, because I think that had been um, when who was it that played Dirty Den? It was when he came back for a little bit and then back from the dead, and then his, the actor was involved in some kind of scandal. The character I would most like to see retired mm. is Simon Cowell. He's not a character, he's real man. I think man. he is. <laughs> so, um, I, I, it's, it's a shame. I think Ken should just stay in it. People like the stuff with Kim and Deirdre. There's no reason to get rid of him. No, exactly not. William Roach said, When people ask me why I've played the same role for 50 years, I try to explain that I haven't. Because like all human beings, and thanks to clever scriptwriters, Ken's evolved. He's been married three times, had 24 girlfriends, and is head of a totally dysfunctional family. He has a son who's an alcoholic bigamist and a daughter who's a convicted murderer. How many actors get the chance to perform scenes with meaty content like that? 
I'm not even thinking about retiring. It isn't an option and I don't want to even consider it. I love the street and while they want me and while I can do it, I want to carry on. I don't care if I'm 120, I'll still be there. Uh-huh. And in many ways, his attitude to his job is much like the Queen's. Yeah, keep you know, on die going. Die on the throne. Exactly, exactly. And that's what we Brits do. <laughs> die on the throne. <laughs> Hopefully not the metaphorical one. <laughs> oh, so there we go. I think we've said everything that there's possible to say about Ken now. What have we missed? Mm, probably loads. Probably loads, but I think two character profiles worth is certainly enough to get an understanding of what the character is like. I'd like people to write in and tell me what their fantasy end for Ken would be. How, how should Ken how be How should written Ken's out? story finish? Cause... Death or glory. <laughs> Death or glory. <laughs> no, there must be other... Th- people People must be able to think of other things. There must be other things. There must mm. be some cool things that I haven't thought of that they could... Uh, I don't imagine for one... I think it's going to be... When Ken goes, there's going to be a massive like on on screen funeral, and everyone's going to cry and stuff. But I don't imagine that his final storyline will be anything but a hastily written. Yeah, it's not going to be like a Haley long drawn it's out. It's going to be like or... a Blanche style. Oh, yeah. they're dead. And that's a shame, really, because I mean, he deserves to go out in a blaze of glory, even if that blaze of glory is just like him getting old and. But like I said, we, even we can't agree on what would be the most fitting ending. So No, I, I, I wouldn't want him to leave Weatherfield, I don't think. Well, there you go, they can't. So basically, you just want um, William Rich to live forever. Yeah. Because you can't think of... I, mean, I, I really liked how they were at Mike Baldwin when he died in Ken's arms. That was and very... It dramatic yeah and because of the rivalry between them and if mike had still been alive then it could have been ken dying in his arms i don't think i could have coped with seeing ken die miserable and confused no like that was a very sad ending and it oh, it didn't really affect me because i didn't really know the character that well hey mike mm. yeah. whereas obviously everyone everyone knows ken and it, i i think although everyone was sad about Haley dying of cancer because everyone liked her Mm. i think it would be way tougher to watch ken Mm. go through that because it's like and what did you would have to go through as well because he's been on everyone's television for 50 years yeah he's he's the tv character that everybody knows and whether or not you like him he's he's been around almost since the beginning of television he is kind of like. like an unsung hero of british culture really because everybody has all these iconic people you know like doctor who or like television icons like Jerry Halliwell were in the Union. Yeah, and, and, Ke- and Ken Barlow doesn't really, really get the recognition no, that he deserves. He's, he's just been there quietly the whole time. Getting on with it. Yeah, kind of like Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's, but he's, he gets recognition, doesn't he? Oh, kind of. What, Prince Philip? Well, he gets... He just trails along behind the Queen holding a handbag, doesn't he? <laughs> well, I think that Ken should have another Lifetime Achievement Award. Really? Yeah. Should we give him one? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd love him to have a, a final big storyline that could get him some proper awards at the soap shows because I, I mean they didn't time. have big soap awards properly yeah, when, when he was had his big storyline. He's watching so he's... all these whippersnappers coming in, taking all the glory. I'm and... the best actor. Look at me, Peter. Yeah, exactly. And we've it's been proven by Haley and um, Roy's storylines that older characters are mm. more than capable of winning the public's vote when it comes to things like this. Yeah, definitely. But we don't want him to win the award for either him or Deirdre croaking. No, not best. Although Deirdre does croak quite a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so should we leave Ken there? Yeah, I think that was, so. That was the meaty one. We still got we still got Emily to do. That's going to take a while. We still got, I think even Deirdre is going to take a little while as well. But um, there we go. There is Ken. We achieved it. Well done. Phew, you're still here, everybody. Wow, since then, so much... Or we just fast-forwarded to the end. So much has happened since then, because obviously he's had a great big picture drawn of himself and painted in. He has, hasn't he? Yes. Yes. I can't believe that um, Ken has still been a fairly important presence in the show in the last six years. I mean, often when you get to characters that, you know, in their autumn years, that they, they... kind of get pushed to the siding. I mean, well, Ken has. No, listen, but... one of the things we talked about in the um, character profile that we've just both heard, as you will know, is that he <laughs> he's he kind of went no, off the I, boil a bit. I've not heard it at all. I've got no idea I could have said anything. He went, we, he went off the boil a bit, I think, and we were talking about perhaps he's not, you know, not the most interesting not of characters. I really think that he they they made a, uh, an effort to reinvigorate 
the character of Ken and it really yeah. shows with the stuff that we've got to talk about. Absolutely. I mean, it's interesting, even though he has been reinvigorated, and I definitely think he has, he still didn't come very highly in the Coropedia's Ultimate Character Survey this year. He came at like 44th or something like that, which is kind of shocking. But I mean, there have been some truly great other characters as well. Uh, yes, yeah. The so, other thing I would oh, say, that the, the biggest things really that have happened to Ken since we did the profile were really um Deirdre's death which is mm. sad we we Deirdre was still alive and so was Anne Kirkbride well yeah we, we were we were less this. than a year away from Anne Kirkbride's death and, and mere months away from Deirdre's final appearance in the program when we recorded this I think it's yeah. it's shocking to think this and um go on. no I was just gonna say because she she ends up her excuse for leaving Weatherfield is the stress of um the trial that Peter was going through um but obviously Anne Kirkbride was having a um, personal problems and um, yeah, never made it back. So in 2015, we had to say a very sad goodbye to Deirdre and, and you could tell everybody involved in the storyline, especially William Roach himself, who, you know, been the other the other half of their double act for all these years, is saying goodbye to, to Anne, really. Oh, it's heart, it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Mm. Um, the other big thing that happened was the return, some might say, the first appearance, but they would be wrong, of Daniel, his son, <laughs> who um, who obviously, you know, kicked off a massive story with that made the Barlows part of the centre well, stage all, of the show. This is and all we talked to... about in the in the profile we talked about um, Daniel and we said he was like one of the least significant of all of Ken's children. <laughs> and I suggested they bring him back and I also said that I thought there might be a bit of a a thing between him and Tracy, but uh, <laughs> not yet. Because they're not, not related. They're not actually related, um, are they? Necessarily. It hasn't happened well, yet, but it certainly could, could do. If they if they get really desperate for some headlines. Yeah, I mean, what's the next natural progression from sex worker following the death of your your pagan wife? Um. Yeah. <laughs> adopted half sister or something. <laughs> uh, well, this was all down to Kate Oates' um, time as producer on Coronation Street, wasn't it? Because when she came in, one of her uh, manifestos, if you like, was to breathe new life into the Barlow family, and she she did a bloody good job. <laughs> she did with flying colours because she brought back Daniel, ten out of ten. played by Rob Mallard, new new casting. Perhaps one of the most significant new casts, absolutely in the past, in the past decade. Yep. Um, Peter Barlow was brought back, Adam Barlow, because she thought well this. Coronation Street should be about the Barlow. She wanted them to be at the heart of the street, and definitely the Platts who had been. Yeah monopolising time I suppose I wasn't complaining about it up until no, then they were definitely the prominent a family bit. yeah and we were we loved the Platts mm. um, but they <laughs> even in a show as as long running as Coronation Street the Platts certainly don't have the pedigree of, of the Barlows and really I think it's a travesty the Platts are still named after a character that's not even in it anymore I know I know there's no particular reason I mean how many Platts I mean, there's Sarah Platt and David Platt, but obviously Nick's not a Platt. Gail's not a Platt anymore. Well, who Audrey's not a Platt, but yeah. they're all bundled in together, aren't what they? Was I, suppose, I suppose Shona is a Platt. What was Gail's original surname? Uh, I can't Potter. Remember. That's it. They should be the Potter clan. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we're not, not <laughs> no talking about that. Um, well, in 2017, that was when Ken persuaded Sinead to abort her child that she um, bore, was well, that she had... No, not bore. Um coming pregnant <laughs> she was carrying that's the, that's what I'm yeah, about. i know that they don't teach you this lingo because you're a boy no, 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 no idea um with with daniel um and and she'd only just been started going out with him and ken thought that this was not such a good idea but i think he lived <laughs> to regret that decision for such numerous idea. reasons of course for, um first of which it caused him to be pushed down the stairs in one of my favorite storylines of 2017 of course who could forget who killed ken <laughs> <laughs> As we constantly referred to it accidentally on the podcast. Care. I don't care. It's cool. It's the who, who killed Ken story and it's going to stay that way. He got pushed down the stairs and this was fantastic. The, the Hugh done it. It was masterfully... Sounds like you just said Hugh done it. Hugh done it. Hugh, I don't know who Hugh is. <laughs> it wasn't him. Um, yeah, masterfully um, plotted and, and weaved together for the spring, summer 2017 and, and all of the Barlows were suspects along with a few others like Pat Phelan. Um, and I, I absolutely loved that. And um, having having Ken, the you know number one guy on Coronation Street, at the heart of this 
<laughs> not murder mystery was a genius idea yes. and it just went to show as has a lot of the other stories that he's been involved in since then that he can still he still got it when it comes to the old the old acting yes malarkey. yeah definitely um so let's just recap briefly all of the things that ken has done well we've kind of done it already no, we, just, so we, we missed out nessa warner but who's... michael in 2014, uh, did release him because of the stress of uh, Peter's trial. And then 2015, we get sad news, Deirdre has died. But he blames Tracy for stopping Deirdre from coming back um, because she was ashamed of what Tracy got up to. And I can't remember what it was. Murdering? Can't remember. Um, and he uh, dates... No, she'd been, she'd been having it off with... Um... Having an affair with somebody. Who'd she been having it off with? Don't know. Someone. Doesn't... Well, it's not about Tracy. Stop asking questions. Then also that year, she dates. He dates Nessa Warner, and that is the sister of Kathy. It's Tony, I think. Tony, what's it? Huh? Tony Jason's dad. What? Tony, that's who Tracy had been knocking off. Oh with. no, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about Nessa. You yeah. made it sound like Nessa was Tony's sister. No, Nessa was Kathy's sister, wasn't she? That that's was, what I just said. That was a um, strange pairing, and I think at the time people were like, hang on a minute, Ken's not going to be moving on quite so quickly with a character that... They really, really floundered with Ken for a little bit, trying to get him going out with people. I didn't um, think I hated Nessa quite as much as the general fandom did. I, I kind of liked her. Yeah. When I think Nessa, the thing that comes to my mind straight away is her trying to snarf a bit of turkey on Christmas Day 2015. I don't remember much else about her at all, but from Ken tried to get her to be vegetarian and then she had sneaky turkey times. <laughs> that, oh, Coronation Street can't have a character who's vegetarian without other characters trying to eat meat in secret around <laughs> them. What is that about? They had it with her Beth and Kirk yeah, exactly. a few so years I'm thinking ago, of, didn't they? Um, <clears throat> then, 2016, he has a stroke during an argument with Peter and that was brilliant because we didn't know that was coming did no, we that was something one of kate secret. oates's patented um twists secret and twists. unannounced secret twists and at the end of the episode this is not long after peter had come back and he was in an argument with ken and then collapses in the hall and i remember watching it with you going oh my gosh ken's had a stroke what's going on and so he stood there and to kind of you know pull his stroke face through a bit and uh, I, I thought he did such a great job with that. And this is what caused Daniel to come back. He was there um, mm. reading poetry by his bedside or something. Wasn't he, it? Yeah, I think he was mad at everybody. And so only Daniel could see him. And yes. this is when Adam came back the same year. Then 2017, this is when he starts getting up to no good. He persuades Sinead to abort her baby. Because this is when Daniel was going off to do his university business. And um, Ken said she, she was going to hold him back. Um, and then he gets pushed down the stairs. We didn't know who it was by, but it turned out to be Daniel. But every single one of the Barlows was a suspect. Um, he eventually forgives Daniel. <laughs> it was all fine in the end. Um, well, he kind of said to everybody, look, everybody in this family is a screw-up. could have been up. any of you. You've all done something. You've been a bigamist. You killed Charlie Stubbs. <laughs> uh, the, the list goes on. And they're all like, yeah. I think Daniel can be forgiven for a bit of a push down the stairs and was, a bash on the I noggin was, with, a, with a big book. I was owed a push down the stairs, says Ken. And it's good enough for Gail, good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, so if, if, if she gets to be pushed down the stairs by her son, I want to be pushed down the stairs by my son. <laughs> um, we also find out that year, we have a bit of a retcon, don't we? When it turns out that Billy, lovely saintly Billy, the vicar, was... Uh, yeah, newly archdeacon Billy. Yeah, partly responsible for the death of Susan, Nobody his tell the bishop. daughter, and also Peter's sister. And he's like, you're gonna, I'm gonna tell everyone or whatever. And then Peter pushes him off a cliff. Because Peter's like, he doesn't push him off a cliff. I want to push somebody. He doesn't push Billy off a cliff. He just locks him up in his boot and drives near a cliff and makes him think he's going to push him off the cliff. That cliff wobble was down to Billy's lack of balance and nothing more. I think he'd been on the communion wine. But yeah. this is after, after this, Billy's like, well, I think I'm going to tell everybody about this. Um, and Ken comes, I remember him coming to his hospital uh, bedside yes. looking like the godfather, he didn't did. he? And he did this big speech about, rah, 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 protect the family. Rah. Shut your mouth. Yeah, it, it was great. Another another brilliant, brilliant yeah. scene that showed that Ken has bet, definitely still got it. I bet William Roach didn't think that he would be doing a, like, keep your mouth shut for the good of the family speech to somebody. But He's he did. So he did good. it really well. So, He's so, so good. It was so scary. Yeah. It was really scary. So, tell us what happened in 2018. Oh, okay. Then Sinead confides in Ken when she finds out that she's got cervical cancer. Um, so, Ken agrees to keep this a secret, but eventually Sinead decides, no. rather than... 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. So it's rather than t- taking treatment for it, as would be the medical medically recommended route. Yeah, Mar- rather route, than taking medical advice. Um, she decides to forego that because she was because she's pregnant. Uh, no, is she pregnant this summer? Yeah, she's carrying. Is she? I don't remember actually. Yeah, she must have been pregnant at this time. So that's why she doesn't take the treatment because she she doesn't want to harm the baby. So she has a <laughs> kale smoothie fix and think that's that's going to fix her. But no, and she eventually collapses. So Ken says to Daniel, look, I've got a bit of a secret that I need to tell you. And they had that episode that was like a, a five-hander or something um, with all the Barlows and that, that got awards or nominations or something. So that was pretty good. And I think it had one of Ken's, you know, starting to become commonplace monologues over over images of cast doing tragic dramatic things um but when daniel found out um about all of this and can keep him a secret and everything he decided to cut him out of his life for a little bit at least yes carry on i did all I was gonna, in 2019 he started dating claudia now which this was, was another fantastic move i think that this was probably long enough i mean look there's no replacing deirdre is there let's just let's just all agree that but um there, there was also a bit which i haven't we haven't said about here that he was um he was possibly going to be going out with audrey for yes, a bit exactly. wasn't there she started cutting his hair or something i remember there being a scene well, after 60 years of him living there he's like i might as well go up the road here. <laughs> um and they um yeah they started i oh, wasn't there was there was something with a book wasn't there ken trying to get audrey to read Anna Karenina, Anna Karenina or something and she's and... like haha yeah brilliant and she didn't bother reading it no um, but I'm sure Deirdre wouldn't have either to be fair no I don't think many people really want to read it yeah so Ken this is, Claudia is Ken's like third you know bit of skirt after Deirdre basically <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, he, but this, this is the one that lasted the longest <laughs> and uh, it was, yeah it, was, it sadly didn't last long did it um, because well, after two thousand, after celebrating his eightieth birthday in the Rovers, um, in two thousand and nineteen, at the end of two thousand and nineteen, then Sinead killing the mood a little bit by announcing she's only got weeks to live. Ken decides, I've had enough of this. Ten thousandth episode, I'm out of here. Off to Stillwater's retirement home with my dear Claudia, where he gets into more adventures. I just love how Ken has had so many. He's had more stories than half the younger cast in the last five years, hasn't he? Good. Yeah, it's good. Um, so yeah, he he, he goes to he goes to Stillwaters with with Claudia and also Norris and Frida were there. So that was a nice little reunion what earlier a coincidence. this year. Um, where he got into a battle with this bloke called Charles, <laughs> who was the head of the resident society, I think. Um, committee, the residence committee, residence committee, and he was I making apologize. up rules and charging people yeah, fines he was taking for money things. off people and and squirrelling it away somewhere. It really was corruption, I tell you. Ken didn't care about this corruption until he was charged money for Eccles doing a piddle on the floor. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, poor Eccles. Suddenly he unveiled. I just remembered. Eccles I mean, died this is time. Eccles the biggest death of the year? I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. we'll have to see if anything happens on the anniversary which episode tomorrow, which we still haven't watched. Although by the time you upload this, we upload this, then it will have been on. Um, yeah, Eccles. The, well, this is one of the reasons why Ken decided to move back to the street. I think because Eccles died under Emma's care earlier this year, didn't she? Oh, Emma's girl. Emma had to take her to the vet to get her put down, this. and Ken was like, Ken missed saying goodbye to his dear dog who'd been bequeathed to him by Blanche, yeah. what, 10 years or so ago. The thing is... And he's like, oh, this place isn't for me. Even yeah. though it kind of was, because it was a bunch no, of but... poshos reading books all day, oh, and right, I thought he definitely. loved it. He got to do fencing, he got to do fancy art. So what you're saying is, Ken, when Eccles died and Ken wasn't there, he said, you know what? There's loads of people I'd love to watch die. I better get back to Corrie because they're not going um, to... Otherwise, they'll die and I'm not there. I won't get to see it and gloat over there. I, I would think that grades. if you hang around a retirement um, home in 2020 <laughs> for long enough, you'll probably you see quite a few people that. die. But they're not main characters. Exactly, so that's what I'm saying. Let's get back and to Norris the street. Norris looks too sprightly. <laughs> Yes, and Frida's a blooming uh, spring chicken. He ends up leaving Norris in charge of the committee in some strange loophole that means if you get voted chair of the uh, head of the committee or whatever, you can get to actually give that and position to whoever you want. And he screwed over um, Claudia because she was thought she was going to get yeah. nominated. And he was like, oh, bye, I wish that Claudia hadn't stayed. She needs to come back. I'd she love that. She wanted to live somewhere that has wood panelling. And I completely understand because mm-hmm. I would love that as well. And that's kind of all that Ken's done this year, hasn't he? Because well, he's um, many... he had a bit of a um, COVID-related 
time away from the cobbles. Many of the older characters have not had a great 2020 because they can't, they couldn't actually No, I'm not sure they've made their uh, minimum episode count for the year. Still get paid. (laughs) Um, But yeah, but but he's back now and um, he's fighting against Ray alongside Roy and Brian and Kathy and that lot to save the cobbles one more time. I did, we did mention briefly the cobble, him saving the cobbles. I said that's the only thing he's done in the last... 20 years or whatever. Um, I think we did Ken a disservice. I think we fair. really did, yeah. But, but I'm going to be this honest. this is his renaissance, yes. Yes, I'm going to be honest. He wasn't top billing, really. I think no. that Kate Oates was completely right to recenter the Barlows and uh, she proved that you can still write for Ken. I don't know who thought you couldn't, but if it needed to be proven, it, it, had, it has been. And he has... Um, yeah, I mean... He's he's not like the most loved character. He's not the most likable character, but he's the original. So, and he just feels like he's gonna be here forever. Well, he's definitely uh, has no intention whatsoever no. of ever leaving. We talked about what would happen if, you know, what would be the end for Ken. I almost like I don't in feel like I need to think about profile. that yet that's, because that's I, yeah, we I was talking to you yesterday or the day before. Like, oh, do you think Ken's gonna be still here for the seventieth? And it's like. He probably will be. I hope so. Is he going to be the first cent- Let's centenarian? Not, Is that the word? Touch wood. On, Let's, on 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 well, soap. Well, he yeah. said that. He said that in the um, the sixty years of Coronation Street documentary we watched yeah. yesterday. He said, "I want to be the first cent- centurion <laughs> to <laughs> to be in a soap." And I, you, think, you know what? He's only got twelve years left. Look, I think let's he... <laughs> not jinx anything. But... I really, oh, I, I love Ken. It's, Coronation Street is going to be. It's not going to be the same without him. Let's so not talk about it. Are you going to read this quote out? You're, yeah, we, we we did read it on last week's podcast, but it feels like through all the interviews that he's done in recent weeks to mark the 60th anniversary, we might as well take a snippet from that. And I've got it again. So he says, most people don't get to live another life like that. I am not Ken, but I like him and I'm his caretaker and I care for him. I'm an actor. But Ken is more than just a part that I play. He is another being, like a close friend that I inhabit and I work with. Very few people have ever done that. There is no reason why Coronation Street cannot go on forever if it continues to adapt, that's what he says about himself, to whatever is happening. Coronation Street is a massive part of my life. I love it and I'm eternally grateful to it. I love what I'm doing. I see the future of more of the same and more enjoyment. What a lovely quote. I really I do, like I love what he says how, about being how Ken's How much reverence caretaker. he speaks about the show in. Yeah. Yeah, Ken's caretaker. It's such a lovely and, way of putting it. Really interesting fact: you will never see William Roach and Ken Barlow in the same room together. It's always either one or the other. Weird. You'd almost think. Anyway, that's it for Ken, and um, I'm I'm sure we'll do another character profile of him sometime. Maybe come back in ten years and see what oh, he's been let's up to. Stop. Gin- I'm not. I'm thing. saying that. Oh, I'm not. I'm saying. Okay. It. Right. Thank you very much, He's William Roach, be cyborg, for your Ken. amazing. I, listen, I don't know why he wasn't second in line after the Queen to get the COVID vaccinations that we started giving out today. Yeah, absolutely. He and he and the Queen should have been number one and number two, and then we can start negotiating, um, beloved, <laughs> beloved entertainment figures. I don't yes. know who else you want to get shut up. I, I personally would quite like to have an injection myself well, obviously but you're not a beloved entertainment figure um someone's definitely listening to this well i bet they're not <laughs> right i said if you're still listening to this all this time later press hit we like, like if you, you know. listen this far yeah hit like right now <laughs> right. right i think it is time to go i've got some washing up to do because i just washed this broken down so yeah that's my merry evening christmas. sorted everybody merry christmas to us thanks for listening and we'll see you next time <laughs> with another character profile <laughs>